Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we delve into the mysteries of ancient prophecies and the wonders of the divine. Have you ever pondered the secrets held within the pages of history? Do you seek understanding beyond the veil of the present? Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual insights and the heights of celestial visions. Stay tuned, and let's embark on this journey together. Are you ready to uncover the truths that have transcended time? The prophet Ezekiel saw a vision of vast numbers of people resurrected to live again as physical human beings. What is the meaning of this mystifying vision, and what does it teach us about God's plan? From his earliest days, Ezekiel was groomed for the priesthood within Judah's realm. Yet, his aspirations crumbled when Nebuchadnezzar's forces captured him and his peers, exiling them to Babylon. Removed from Jerusalem's sacred temple, the worth of his priestly education seemed uncertain. However, divine providence was at work. God had chosen Ezekiel for a prophetic role of great significance, placing him among the ranks of Isaiah and Jeremiah. Christian author Christopher Wright observed, We should recognize the valuable aspects Ezekiel's priestly background contributed to his prophetic role, but also the profound shock, personal, professional, and theological, he must have endured. Nevertheless, God intended to utilize everything instilled in Ezekiel throughout his preparatory years, the message of Ezekiel, 2001, page 27. At the age of 30, Ezekiel began receiving remarkable visions from the divine. He meticulously noted the precise moment of his inaugural vision, in my thirtieth year, during the fourth month, on the fifth day, while among the captives by the river Chebar, the heavens unfolded, revealing divine visions, Ezekiel 1 verse 1, with consistent emphasis. For Ezekiel, the celestial divide was miraculously bridged. In these visions, what did he witness? Advancing past the initial encounter with the majestic celestial beings, we look to verses 26 and 28. Above the throne, there appeared a figure resembling a man, such was the semblance of the splendor of the Lord. Ezekiel's response mirrored that of prophets Daniel, Paul, and John in subsequent times. Overwhelmed by the sight, I fell prostrate. Then I heard the voice of the one, God, speaking. Mortal, rise to your feet, and I shall address you, he commanded, Mortal, I appoint you as a messenger to the Israelites, Ezekiel 1 verse 28, Ezekiel 2 verses 1 to 3. Thus, God entrusted Ezekiel with a monumental task and vital proclamations to make. His messages were destined to transcend his era, resonating through history. Among these, a pivotal vision offered solace against humanity's relentless foe, the grim prospect of life culminating in death. Looking forward Ezekiel, while in Babylon, spoke to a modest group of fellow captives from Judah. Yet, his message was not confined to these exiles who had little control over their plight. After King Solomon's reign, the kingdoms of Israel and Judah split. The Assyrians had already taken the people of Israel into captivity by the late 8th century BC, long before Ezekiel's time. As Ezekiel began his prophecies, many from the kingdom of Judah were also in captivity, initially by the Assyrians and later by the Babylonians. More would follow due to subsequent Babylonian conquests. Ezekiel's prophecies, upon close examination, were largely intended for a far-off future, specifically addressing the end-time descendants of Israel. His divine revelation centered on significant events of the end times, both triumphant and tragic, destined to unfold many centuries later. Jesus Christ, in his prophecy on the Mount of Olives during his final week, referred to the end times, saying, These are the days of retribution, so that all that is written by the prophets of old, including Ezekiel, may come to pass, Luke 21 verse 22. However, these dramatic end-of-age events are only part of a broader prophetic picture. Peter addressed the multitude in Jerusalem on Pentecost, seven weeks post Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, urging, repent and turn back, so your sins may be erased, in anticipation of times of renewal from the Lord's presence, and he may dispatch Jesus Christ, previously proclaimed to you, whom heaven must retain until the era of the restoration of all things. As spoken by God through all his sacred prophets since time immemorial, Acts 3 verses 19-21. Throughout history, there have been nations that have strayed from their foundational principles and teachings. These deviations often led to periods of hardship and reflection. The story of Israel, as told through the biblical prophet Ezekiel, is one such example. Ezekiel was tasked with delivering a message to a people who had historically struggled with adherence to their faith's tenets, particularly the avoidance of idolatry and the observance of the Sabbath. The question arises, who does the term Israel refer to in the modern context? The current state of Israel is predominantly composed of individuals from the tribe of Judah. However, some interpretations of history and biblical prophecy suggest that the descendants of Israel's other tribes can be found among the populations of the United States, the British Commonwealth, and Northwestern Europe. These interpretations propose that the patterns of rebellion observed in ancient times have parallels in the behavior of these modern groups. 
According to the biblical narrative, such behavior could lead to collective and individual consequences. Yet, the prophecies also speak of hope and future blessings, raising questions about their significance for those who have passed away. The biblical narrative recounts the fate of generations who faced the repercussions of their choices, from the Israelites who perished in the wilderness after the exodus to those who suffered under foreign invasions and occupations. The text also contemplates the fate of innocents, such as the children slain by Herod in his attempt to eliminate the infant Jesus, and the victims of the Holocaust. These reflections on past tragedies lead to broader existential questions that concern all of humanity, not just the descendants of Israel. The message conveyed through Ezekiel offers insights into these questions, suggesting that there may be hope and redemption beyond the apparent finality of death. In the midst of a desolate valley, a prophet stood, surrounded by the remnants of a once vibrant people. This valley, filled with dry bones, represented the collective hardships and trials of a nation through time. Yet, within this vision lies a message of hope, a promise of revival and a future reawakening. As the prophet gazed upon the scene, a divine voice posed a question that challenges the limits of possibility, can these bones live? With humility and faith, the prophet deferred to the wisdom of the divine, acknowledging that the potential for life rests with the Creator. The narrative unfolds with a powerful decree from the divine, promising to infuse the lifeless bones with breath, symbolizing the vital force that animates all living beings. The breath, coming from all directions, represents the universal and boundless nature of this life-giving essence. And so, as the prophet conveyed the divine command, the bones were imbued with life, rising up as a formidable assembly, a testament to the potential for transformation and renewal. This vision transcends its historical context, offering a timeless message of hope and the possibility of new beginnings for all. In a vision revealed to a prophet long ago, a divine voice declared that the dry bones scattered across a valley represented a great multitude, the entire house of Israel. The vision continued with a powerful promise, the divine would open their graves, raise them up, and guide them home. This act was not just a restoration of physical life but a profound spiritual awakening for those who had not known the divine in their earthly existence. The culmination of this vision was the infusion of the Holy Spirit into the resurrected beings, offering them a chance for true conversion, a transformation marked by repentance, forgiveness, and the reception of divine grace. This process was not merely for the sake of life but for the attainment of eternal life within the divine kingdom. Echoing this Old Testament prophecy, the New Testament reiterates the theme of universal salvation. It speaks of a future where all will be saved through a new covenant, a time when sins are forgiven, and ungodliness is turned away. This promise extends beyond the present, reaching into a time when those who have been called, those who follow the teachings of Christ, will be granted everlasting life upon His return. The vision of resurrection is not limited to a single nation or people, it extends to all humanity. The divine, known as the God of all flesh, does not discriminate in the offer of new life. Biblical narratives recount that rulers and peoples from various nations, including the Queen of Sheba, the inhabitants of ancient city-states like Tyre, Sidon, and Nineveh, and even those from Sodom and Gomorrah, will stand alongside the Israelites in a future resurrection. The teachings of Jesus affirm this inclusivity, an appointed time is coming when all who have passed away will hear the divine call and rise from their resting places. This momentous event is not confined to the present but is set to occur after a significant period known as the millennium, indicating a sequence of resurrections. The notion that salvation is confined to the present era is not a universal tenet. Contrary to some beliefs, scriptural texts indicate that a vast majority will encounter their moment for salvation during a monumental resurrection, as depicted in the prophetic visions of Ezekiel. The Apostle John's vision in Revelation speaks of a time when all, regardless of their status, will stand before a divine tribunal, where their lives will be assessed not instantly, but over time, based on the records of their deeds. This period of judgment, symbolized by the great white throne, is not merely a moment of condemnation but a process guided by mercy and justice. The scriptures emphasize that the divine essence is one of salvation, seeking to draw all towards truth and righteousness. The message is clear, there is no delight in the demise of any soul. Instead, there is an invitation to embrace a path of virtue and life. This forthcoming epoch of judgment is not about granting a second chance but about providing a fair and equitable opportunity for those who, in their previous existence, did not fully comprehend or encounter the Divine Presence. Following the seven-day Feast of Tabernacles, there is a distinct celebration known as the Eighth Day. While its significance is often overlooked, it is a crucial element in the broader narrative of redemption. This day aligns with the period of the Great White Throne Judgment, a time envisioned as offering a first true chance at salvation for all souls, regardless of their past knowledge or understanding. 
the biblical feasts, including this special day, unfold a divine plan of salvation, a sequence of events leading to ultimate redemption. This day aligns with the period of the Great White Throne Judgment, a time envisioned as offering a first true chance at salvation for all souls, regardless of their past knowledge or understanding. The biblical feasts, including this special day, unfold a divine plan of salvation, a sequence of events leading to ultimate redemption. The eighth day, in particular, echoes the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones, symbolizing a future reunion and enlightenment of those once lost, in an era marked by love, peace, and abundance. This holy day serves as a reminder that the divine blueprint encompasses every individual, extending an invitation to all to embrace transformation and secure their place within the eternal divine family. As we conclude today's episode on Celestial Chronicles, we reflect on the profound visions of Ezekiel and the promise of a future filled with hope and renewal. What do these ancient prophecies mean to you? How do they resonate with your understanding of life and the hereafter? Share your thoughts and join the conversation below. Remember, the dialogue doesn't end here, it's just the beginning. What questions do these stories raise for you? Comment down below, and let's continue this fascinating discussion. Until next time, keep looking up and seeking the wisdom of the ages.